For all the power on the road, for all the hard-working miles, with the ongoing changes to vehicles, today's customers demand and expect more from their foundation brakes, and Rockwell International has delivered. With more aerodynamic trucks, increased loads, added emphasis on safety and maintenance, brakes today are more important than ever. That's why Rockwell International combined performance and dependability with ease of maintenance in all Q and Q Plus series brakes. Whether it's for steer, drive, or trailer axle applications, Rockwell brake designs have proven performance and reliability. Today we're going to look at Rockwell's Q series brakes and Q Plus brakes. Although we'll be working with Q series cam brakes, we'll also look at how Q Plus brakes differ from these. We'll also cover preventive maintenance schedules, minor and major inspections, brake assembly, disassembly, and troubleshooting tips. In our first module, we'll show you some of the major components of the Q-Series brake and how they work. We'll also cover the differences between the Q and Q Plus brake, and finally, show you what's involved in a minor inspection of a Q series brake. So let's begin by identifying the major components. The Q series brake assembly consists of a stamped backing plate for the front 15 inch brakes and trailer 16 and a half inch brakes, and a cast brake spider on 16 and a half inch front and drive axles a chamber bracket, cam bushings and seals, camshaft, anchor pins and anchor pin bushings, brake shoes and lining, retainer springs, a return spring, cam rollers, and roller retainers. Once they are applied, the brakes operate in the following manner. An air chamber rotates the S-cam through a slack adjuster. This in turn lifts the rollers, which push the brake shoes against the drum. Once the shoes contact the drum, friction is created. As this frictional force increases, vehicle speed decreases, ultimately stopping the vehicle. To maintain optimum braking performance, manual or Rockwell automatic slack adjusters can be used to adjust the clearance between the brake linings and drum. The simplicity of these cam brakes is their strong point, and ease of maintenance a key benefit. If you recall what we said at the start of the module, there's a Q brake and a Q plus brake. More importantly, you need to understand that there are differences between the two of them. Let's examine these. For example, the front 15 by 4 Q Plus brakes feature a lining 5 16 of an inch thicker than the Q Series brake with 93% more wearable volume. The Q Plus also offers a cast spider versus a stamped backing plate, double web instead of single web shoes, improved camshaft bushings, and a 1.5 by 28 spline camshaft compared to one and a quarter by 24 spline camshaft on the standard 15 inch Q brake. On the 16 and a half inch Q plus for the drive and trailer axle, you'll find that the lining is one eighth of an inch thicker than on the standard Q brake, providing 27% more wearable volume. There is a commonality of parts between the 16 and a half inch Q and Q plus. However, some of the parts are different. The difference is the camshaft and brake shoe. Now these are easily identified by the Q plus markings stamped into each one. Also different are the camshaft bushings and the heavy duty return spring. The key to performance and reliability of any system is proper service and maintenance. In fact, the March 1991 NHTSA heavy truck brake study concluded that although heavy truck safety has improved dramatically over the past decade, Further improvements are required, and that the single largest factor needing improvement remains brake adjustment and overall brake system maintenance. 
That's why Rockwell's maintenance manual number four provides complete preventive maintenance, inspection schedules, warnings, and procedures for Rockwell Q-Series brakes. You can also refer to maintenance manual number 4B for information on our automatic slack adjusters. A schedule for the periodic adjustment, cleaning, inspection, and lubrication of the brake equipment must be made according to one of the following schedules. Your fleet's chassis inspection schedule, the vehicle manufacturer's chassis inspection schedule, or a minimum of four inspections during the life of the linings. And brakes must also be adjusted as frequently as required for correct operation and safety. The adjustments must give correct clearance between the lining and drum, correct push rod travel, and correct balance between the brakes. Now to perform a minor inspection, we can begin by checking the air system for leaks, loose fittings, bent lines, and lining wear, which includes checking the chamfer at the center of the shoes. It's important to note that if the chamfer is not there, the brake shoes must be replaced. A minor inspection also includes lubrication. Start with the camshaft, and remember, when lubricating, check to see if grease flows from the seal near the cam head. If leakage is observed, remove the wheels and brakes to replace the seal. Also, remove any grease from the cam head, rollers, and replace the linings. Grease on the linings can cause poor brake performance. And finally, make sure you lube the slack adjuster. For proper brake adjustment, the maximum allowable chamber pushrod strokes are listed in the maintenance manual. Next, check for wheel seal leakage. If leakage is found, replace the wheel seal and check the brake components to see if replacement is necessary. That wraps up our module on component identification, minor inspection, and lubrication. Before moving on, there is one final point to mention again. Some Q and Q plus brake components are different and cannot be interchanged. A warning to that effect is listed in Maintenance Manual 4. For example, if Q-plus brake shoes are used with standard Q camshafts, under certain operating conditions, there is the possibility that the camshaft will roll over during brake application. The result is that the brake will not function properly. And using the same example, the new brake drum may not fit over the Q-plus brake shoes. So be sure you use the right component with the right brake. Now let's move on to our next module. In this module, we'll give you a comprehensive look at the disassembly procedures for the Q and Q plus brakes for a major inspection. But before we do, there are some precautions you need to know about. For example, before beginning disassembly, make sure the vehicle is supported with jack stands and that you block any wheels that remain on the ground. And remember to always wear your safety glasses. Now, prior to starting the teardown procedures, make sure the brakes are fully released. If a spring brake is used, cage the spring using the procedure recommended by the chamber manufacturer. As a warning, when working with spring brake chambers, always follow the chamber manufacturer's recommended procedures. The spring chambers can activate and cause injury. If the vehicle you're working on has Rockwell automatic slack adjusters, begin by removing the pawl. Now, use a wrench to turn the manual adjusting nut on the slack adjuster until the brake shoes are fully retracted. Then remove the wheel end components. When working around brake dust, 
make sure you wear an air purifying mask. And if possible, use the enclosed cylinder vacuum ventilation system to reduce the potential risk of dust from the brake shoe. This applies to both asbestos and non-asbestos linings. Make sure you read the warnings regarding asbestos that are printed in Maintenance Manual 4 and 4B before working on the brakes. Now, to start our teardown procedure, Observe the position of the rollers on the S-cam. They should be seated squarely. During this program, we'll be working on a 16 and a half by 7 drive axle brake. You'll notice a difference in the standard 15 by 4 brake. We'll examine that later. Now, push down on the bottom brake shoe and pull on the roller retaining clip to remove the bottom cam roller. Then, lift the top brake shoe and pull on the roller retaining clip to remove the top cam roller. Next, lift the bottom shoe to release the tension on the brake return spring and remove the spring. Finally, rotate the bottom shoe to release the tension on the two retaining springs. Remove the springs and brake shoes. The brakes are apart. Well, that wraps up our module on brake disassembly. As you can see, the Q and Q Plus brakes are designed and manufactured for ease of service. Next, we'll cover the procedures for a major inspection. In this module, We'll cover the procedures you'll need to perform a major inspection on the Q and Q Plus brake components. We'll start by checking the drum for cracks, severe heat checks, hard spots, or grooving. Make sure you use the drum manufacturer's recommendations to determine if it requires replacement. If a drum has been resurfaced, make sure that it does not exceed the maximum diameter cast on the outside of the drum. Now you should note that Rockwell does not recommend turning drums. Also, be sure to always replace the drum with the same size and type of drum. For example, cast with cast and centrifuge with centrifuge. Next, inspect the linings. Look for abnormal wear patterns. A normal wear pattern should have at least 80% lining contact with even wear across the width of the shoe. If you find that the linings are oil soaked, Rockwell recommends replacement. It is not possible to ensure any cleaning effort will restore the original performance of the friction material. For replacement, use the same linings that were specified on the vehicle's original brakes for proper performance. Our next component in a major inspection is the brake shoes. Begin by checking them for spread webs at the anchor pins. Check the stretch of the shoes between the anchor pin and cam ends. The distance from the center of the anchor pin hole to the center of the roller hole must not exceed 12.765 inches. Continue by checking for broken welds, rust, expanded rivet holes, and correct alignment. The anchor pin holes must not exceed 1.031 inches in diameter. If any of these conditions exist, replace with a new brake shoe. Check the spider for expanded anchor pin holes and for cracks. Also check the anchor pins and anchor pin bushings for corrosion and wear. If any of these problems are found, replace the damaged part. Check for excessive cam bushing wear by checking the up and down or side to side movement of the camshaft. If it is greater than 30 thousandths of an inch, the bushing or the camshaft will need replacement. 
Always use the correct size driver when removing the cam bushings from the spider and chamber bracket. For all slack adjusters, check the gap between the clevis and the collar. If the gap exceeds 60 thousandths of an inch, replace the clevis with a new threaded type. For complete maintenance on manual and automatic slacks, refer to maintenance manual number 4B. Also, check the play of the slack adjuster on the camshaft by moving it in and out. If movement exceeds 60 thousandths of an inch, add a spacing washer when rebuilding. Now remove the slack adjuster and camshaft. Inspect the camshaft by checking for cracks, wear, and corrosion. Check the bearing journals and splines and replace the camshaft if it's damaged. Remember, Q and Q plus cams are different. Also, look for brunelling of the S-cam. And finally, check for flat spots on the rollers. This could be a result of improper greasing of the rollers. And remember, only grease the roller areas that contact the shoe web and not the part that will contact the camshaft. Now check the camshaft bracket for broken welds, cracks, and correct alignment. If any of these problems are found, replace the bracket. Overall, look for uneven lining wear. Make sure the same size and type air chambers are used on both sides of the axle, that the same size and type slack adjusters are used on both sides, and that the same lining materials are used on both ends of each axle. For example, steer axle brakes may have a different lining type than the drive axle brakes. But remember, both sides of the steer axle brake should have the same type just like all four wheels of a tandem axle should have the same lining type. Inspect the airline for air leaks, and with that, we're ready to move on. But before we do, there's one final point. If you're performing a brake reline, do both sides of an axle and, if possible, the whole vehicle. Now, this will help eliminate any brake balance problems that might occur and will help provide brake performance. Also, there are a few practices that Rockwell does not recommend, such as steam cleaning lining materials, using knurled rollers on our brakes, and using oversized or undersized rollers. These will affect brake performance. Throughout the program, we have demonstrated the simplicity of servicing the Q and Q Plus series brakes and referred to their ease of maintenance. In our final module, we will show you the proper procedure for assembling the Q series brake. As we begin, there are a few things we need to do. First, if the camshaft was removed, always reinstall with a genuine Rockwell camshaft. Remember, cam head profiles are different between the Q and Q Plus brakes so always replace with proper parts to maintain brake performance. Make sure you install new seals and bushings as required. Remember, Q-series brakes have grease seals in both the spider and the camshaft bracket, so install both seals with their lips toward the slack adjuster or grease could seep into the cam head area. Put the cam head thrust washer on the camshaft and apply 0617A or B chassis grease to the camshaft bushings and to the camshaft journals. Now, install the camshaft assembly through the spider and bracket so that the camshaft turns freely. And apply grease to the camshaft splines. Install the spacer washer
followed by the slack adjuster. Add spacer washers as necessary to obtain proper end play of 60 thousandths of an inch maximum. So now let's begin our reassembly procedure. First, install the anchor pins. Then put the upper brake shoe in position on the top anchor pin. Hold the lower brake shoe on the bottom anchor pin and install two new retaining springs. Now rotate the lower brake shoe forward and install a new return spring. Note, for 16 and a half by seven brakes, make sure you use the proper spring replacement, orange for Q brake and blue for Q plus. Pull each brake shoe away from the cam to permit enough space to install the cam rollers and retainers. Press the ears of the retainer together to permit the retainer to fit between the brake shoe webs. And finally, push the retainer into the brake shoe until its ears lock in the holes in the shoe webs. And when you're reassembling, make sure to follow the lubrication specification found in Maintenance Manual 4. Replace all the wheel end components. Also, be certain to torque all bolts to maintenance manual specifications. Now let's perform the initial brake adjustment. Begin by removing the pawl. Then turn the manual adjusting nut on the slack adjuster until the lining just touches the drum and then back the manual adjusting nut off one half turn in the opposite direction. Now check your free stroke and applied stroke. To check your free stroke, measure the distance from the center of the large clevis pin to the bottom of the chamber. Use a pry bar to move the slack adjuster so that the linings are against the drum. Measure the same distance again. The difference between the two measurements is the free stroke. Then turn the adjusting nut until the free stroke is between 5 eighths and 3 quarters inch. Now to check the applied stroke. Apply the brakes and hold the pressure at 85 PSI. Again, measure the distance from the center of the large clevis pin to the bottom of the chamber. The difference between your initial stroke measurement and this measurement is the adjusted chamber stroke. Now, turn the adjusting nut so that the adjusted stroke is as short as possible, but not so short that the free stroke causes the linings to drag. The adjusted stroke should be less than the dimensions shown in the chart in maintenance manual number four. Now, reinstall the pawl. And make sure that you uncage all the spring brakes. And of course it's imperative to test drive the vehicle and make a final check of the brakes performance. In this program we have been focusing on the 16 and a half by 7 drive axle brake. Now before we wrap up today let me note a difference when working on the standard 15 by 4 steer axle cue brake. The 15 by 4 Q brake is a single web design with fixed anchor pins. So if replacement is necessary, you need to remove the anchor pin nuts and washers on this brake. Now this procedure is covered in maintenance manual number four. There you have it. A detailed look at the Q and Q plus brakes. Now remember, you'll find the complete preventative maintenance and lubrication schedules listed in maintenance manual number four and a number 4B for the automatic slack adjusters. And now let's take a moment to talk about aftermarket parts. Rockwell Q brakes can be upgraded to Q plus brakes with an upgrade kit. The similar kits are also available from other manufacturers, but they are of a different design than Rockwell's. Rockwell does not recommend nor approve of mixing and matching these components because doing so can result in vehicle imbalance and poor brake performance. 
To fully utilize the benefit of extended lining reline intervals, use genuine Rockwell parts specifically designed for Rockwell brakes. Rockwell International's Q and Q Plus brakes are designed for proven performance, reliability, and ease of maintenance. Our Q series brakes are the industry standard for steer, drive axles, and trailer axles, and we are the leading air brake supplier in North America. With today's emphasis on safety and increased loads, our customers expect more from their foundation brakes and demand a quality product they can depend on. Rockwell International has delivered.